uh, very important. Okay. Let me admit. So for those of you who didn't attend the class uh, last week, make sure you get familiar with the notes and make sure uh, I do have the information, most of the information in the course outline, D2L and the notes, but make sure you talk to your uh, classmates as well to, uh, uh, to get the uh, complete information about the course management and the nature of the course. Okay, so that's important for your study uh, and for your exam. So I, I, I'd like to emphasize uh, a few things uh, in terms of the course management. Okay, so uh, especially for the students who didn't come uh, last week. Okay, here's some uh, arrangement on the course. Uh, also, when you email to me, do not forget, start with the course code. Okay, otherwise I may not be, I'm, I may ignore it. Okay, I, I do receive a lot of emails. Okay, if you have the course code, as I mentioned, my students have highest priority when I look at emails. And uh, the assessment, okay, let's, uh, Let me uh, uh, say this again. So uh, th there are three marked component. Okay, the midterm, uh, lab, and uh, basically the labs, and final exam. Okay, the midterm is on March 9th. Okay, so uh, basically I uh, set this up in the first class. So uh, hopefully uh, all of you will remember the date. And also, I ask each of you to get a working webcam for exams. You will be asked to turn on your webcam during at least the exams. Okay. Uh, quite a few graduate students uh, joined in this week. Okay, you should have come last week. For graduate students, I want to emphasize that your the requirement to a grad student is exactly the same as undergraduate student. Okay, uh, that means you need to do your lab, and uh, but but because you don't really have uh, different from undergrad students, you don't really have the lab hours, so you you, you just need to go to your t, uh, TA. Right now, for graduate students, it's Dr. Lee Gao. Uh, those times to to uh, for. Uh, if you have questions. Okay. And uh, specifically, uh, I'd like to remind the graduate students is uh, uh, you, you, you need to be aware that for graduate student, the minimum grade is B minus. Okay. So uh, sometimes if you are in grad, graduate student class, because you only compare with yourself. Uh, but in this class, because you are with the undergraduate students, so all the requirements is the same. So you will be compared through the class and in terms of grade, okay? And the requirement is that to pass the course, you get the minimum B minus. And historically, I said that you pretty much need to be at the top, top of the class. That means the top 30% of the class. Okay, of course, each year will be different, but historically, that will be the case. And we do have more than uh, 100 students, okay? So for graduate students to uh, be aware, you need to, you need to perf uh, perform very well uh, compared to undergrad students to uh, pass the course. And specifically, uh, last week, we did give an example, right, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 test example. It's a very realistic example. It's very practical. Uh, and uh, But it does need the, some statistical and mathematical uh, complexity. Okay, so you will need to be able to handle that level of the statistics or math materials 
uh, at least at that level throughout the course and of course including the including the exams okay so that's pretty much uh, because there are some students who uh, didn't come last week so i'd like to emphasize those few things uh, any questions regarding regarding the course management Okay, so also we talk about the textbook and uh, in terms of what's, what's the expectation of the course. Okay, so it that, that does have heavy statistics and math content. So you need to work hard and uh, it's real exam. It's not going to be, I, I'd rather emphasize uh, error on the other way. Okay, it's not going to be easy basically. Uh, but if you do follow that, uh, what, 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 uh, you will learn uh, a lot of useful principles and fundamental theories and insight in machine learning and AI that's not going to change probably over the next 10, 20 years. Okay, so uh, we, we talked about this uh, mathematical example uh, that encompass a lot of many concepts. Okay, I hope you have reviewed the example yourself offline and be able to understand uh, most of it, I would say, because some of the concepts we are going to come back again. Okay, I, I, I actually a lot, uh, all those concepts will be using those concepts and coming back again and again across the course. Uh, but this is an important exam and uh, you, you should be able to, uh, any questions re uh, like this, you should be able to answer that independently, okay? And that means it will likely to be in your exam. Okay, and then we, we talk about the basic uh, AI system, okay? So that, that's an intelligent system in terms of the, uh, yeah, basically the, the, the content of this class. We talk about the basics of machine perception and what is intelligent system. And then we started with the, some history of the uh, artificial intelligence or intelligent system. So starting with uh, from 1940s, I said in World War II, uh, that's a, uh, because of the development of e electronics and uh, uh, invention of the computer. So people start to, uh, you know, from the day one, right? We have computer, people start to thinking that the machine intelligence and people start to thinking of that machine could possibly uh, do the intelligent jobs that human does and uh, uh, Turing proposed the Turing test for uh, AI in 1950s. And then there's a, a Dartmouth that meeting. And uh, uh, in, in 1969, uh, so in, 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 in Dartmouth meeting, this was the, the, the word artificial intelligence coined by John McCarthy the first time. And then there's a logical reasoning, right? Logical re reasoning, I think for electrical engineering, we're all familiar with that. If we do the binary uh, 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 computation, right? But the, the, the binary digital circuit, the, the, the binary computation, and then that's basically is a type of uh, logical reasoning. And 1969, we mentioned 1969, Minsky and Pepper proposed the perceptrons, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, I mentioned that these perceptrons haven't changed in the past 50, 50 years. Okay, that, that is a fundamental building block of the uh, uh, up-to-date neural network and deep learning, okay, so perceptrons. 
So uh, things look look good uh, in fifties and sixties because we know the computer. Once we have the computer, it's already better than human in 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 many aspects. Uh, one example is in terms of the calculating, right? Uh, when you uh, calculating the numbers, okay, the fractions or multiplications, it's already um, uh, uh, beat human in, in that time. And then people are quite optimistic that saying, okay, maybe in 10 years, the machine, the computer could replace human in all those tasks. Okay, so there's a question in the, uh, from you in ch chat window. It's uh, what is the perceptions? Uh, we, will, uh, we will talk about that later. Okay, so perception is basically is, uh, is, it's an element to build the neural network and uh, it's basically it's a classifier. Okay, it's a, it's a simple classifier. Uh, we, we have the linear perception and nonlinear perception, but for neural network is basically it's non, non linear uh, perception. Okay, but that's that that's the fundamental building blocks. Okay, we'll talk about that. So keep that question in mind uh, as we are uh, as we are going to talk about more technical details. So for uh, uh, although people have high expectation, right? Because we, we, we uh, people have seen that the computer, you know, that's uh, uh, why, why it appears is it's very powerful, right? So it's very powerful in terms of the computation. Uh, so it's, it has, people have high expectation, but then there's a AI block in 1969 as well. Uh, the reason is simple, it's computational complexity. You can compute, but very, very quickly, uh, you'll find that there's uh, the, the magnitude of computation is growing exponentially. So expectation is very high, but, but then, the, you know, a lot of algorithms, basically you cannot, uh, you don't have enough computing resource to, to do that. So, uh, it's quickly people are very disappointed. Uh, you, you, you have to remember that in terms of computing, computing resource, right? At that time, the computer is not, uh, not like today. It's basically, it's a, all, all computers are mainframe, right? The first computer is probably that the size is like a, like a building, okay? Uh, like our engineering building. The, uh, and the power of it uh, is much less than what, 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 what you hold in your hand, uh, your, your cell phone is much less than that. So think about it. If you want to compute anything, you need to, in, in, that, that's expensive computing resource. Uh, uh, apparently uh, that's unreal, that there's a lot of unrealistic expectations. So the neural net, especially for neural nets, it's a uh, neural net consists of many uh, computations, many perceptions. So it's almost disappeared due to failure uh, to meet the expectations, okay. And then people think, okay, we cannot just uh, compute. So in 1970s, actually, oh, it's uh, still, the, the computers continue develop, uh, developing, right? So if you think about it in 1970s, uh, basically the whole 70s, that's a development of the uh, personal computer, right? So, so the, the computing system is still, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a very promising thing. It's like the internet in the turn of the century. So people say, okay, we can, we can computer to develop a knowledge-based system. Knowledge-based system, uh, pretty much is a rule-based system. So in 1980s, uh, there's um, expert system industry boom. So what's the expert system? Expert system is basically, uh, uh, a rule-based system, like, you know, let's say for doctor, right? Uh, doctor has a lot of knowledge, those knowledge they learned from the, uh, their textbook, uh, those are rules, okay? If you see certain thing, uh, you know, so certain uh, symptoms, then, then basically it's like if that, right? Uh, all those structures, 
uh, using if then. And uh, in 1980s, that there's a boom for uh, expert system, and, and it has lived, uh, certain success. So at uh, that time, the artificial intelligence actually for expert system, there's specific computing language for that. Uh, it's kind of similar to say today, okay, if you, you do deep learning, you use the Python, right? Uh, at that time, so the expert system, because it's a, there's a lot of uh, logical, uh, it's a reasoning, right? Knowledge base, if then, then it's, a, uh, it's basically it's a representation of, lo of logic. So the program, one programming language is called Prolog. Okay, just Prolog. I, I guess the programming language of uh, uh, logics. The other thing is uh, language is uh, in general is represented by uh, by words, right? By concept. So it and it's basically it's a it kind of relationship of the concept. So there is another language is called Lisp, L I S P. It's uh, uh, basically it's to process uh, the those uh, structure. Those are the, the, those concepts are still useful, you know, in another a form is, uh, I, I think is still used today. Okay, at that time, the, uh, the, the programming language for artificial intelligence uh, is uh, Prolog and Lisp. And, and uh, if you look at the development is actually uh, quite interesting as well, you know, in 70s, then in, in 1980s, that's the time uh, the personal computers start starts to thrive, right? Uh, so there's a, uh, okay, so to make it interesting, let me ask you a question. So uh, we know for personal computer, there's two people we, we uh, uh, cannot, we, we have to mention two people for personal computer, right? Uh, the one is uh, uh, Bill Gates, the other, of course, is Steve Jobs. So the, the, the question is that what's a, uh, what, 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 what do Steve Jobs and uh, uh, Bill Gates in, have in common? Uh, apparently there's no unique answer, right? But, but what, what, what do you think is the most, uh, the, the, the most important thing that they are in common such that they, they, they play such a big role in uh, development of personal computing? So they, they were teenagers in the 80s where that uh, computer boom comes in. Yeah, so one, one, one is the Windows and not the Mac OS. So it's pretty much, you know, the uh, what, what, what Nadim has mentioned that. So if you think about it, because they, they were born uh, at the uh, uh, almost the same time. I think one is 1956, and the other is 1957, right? Yes, in 70s, that's the development of the computing, right? In 50s and 60s, the mainframe, and then for mainframe computers, they say, oh, we want, uh, it's, it's like, uh, you know, last, uh, last decade, you know, the, the, the mobile phone, right? That, at that time, say, okay, can, can we take advantage of this in, in people's daily life? The ambition of uh, uh, both of them, I would say, is to put a computer on everyone's desks, right? If you think about it uh, from the mainframe, like a football field or like engineering building, so they want to put that in the uh, person's uh, uh, individual desktop. Okay, it's, uh, it's very ambitious, but, but that uh, is what, 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 what you just said. In 70s, as it's developing, they are uh, uh, just uh, like teenagers, right? Or like 20s or, or, or something like that. They are kind of fresh in uh, college and university, right? Both of them, uh, they, they didn't complete their, co their college. Okay, so, so that's very important. You have to be uh, at the, uh, you know, have right interest and you need to be in the right time of the history. Okay, and actually not, not only, uh, not, uh, those, 
uh, Bill, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, they are representatives, right? And uh, if you think about other people who invent things relevant to our today's computing, they're about that age. If you think about the, like uh, some macrosystem or Oracle or, you know, those uh, uh, big names in today's computing, they're about the same age, right? And when they are inventing this te technology, they're also about the same, same age. Okay, so it's important. So, so what's a, uh, uh, what dedicate, uh, you know, to, um, dictate that development? We know, uh, I think we should be proud that's actually electrical engineering, right? It's uh, integrated circuit. Okay, the integrated circuit was invented in 50 or 60s. And then for integrated circuit and computing power, uh, it's a, uh, it basically, we, we know that's called Moore's law, right? So, however, we were looking at it, uh, the fundamentals are the computing power. Okay. So, uh, apparently, that computing power made this uh, many things possible, including this uh, uh, knowledge based system. But again, the knowledge-based system, we know the rule-based system that is going to have uh, uh, limitations. It, it works well in, in, for a certain level, but, but it doesn't solve all the problems, right? So in the uh, end of 80s, that's uh, uh, expert system industry bust uh, that we call AI's second winter. The first winter is end of 60s, okay? And then, you know, the rule based the one problem is the rule is kind of deterministic, right? So after that, people say, okay, we, we should have to consider, you know, the probability, the rise of probability. Uh, and, and also, uh, some, uh, there's uh, uh, the other thing, similar to probability, they don't call it probability, it's called the fuzzy, fuzzy set theory. Okay, it's still, still useful. And uh, people have developed this uh, genetic algorithm or called evolutional computing, okay, soft computing. That's actually in uh, 19, uh, uh, later, 1980, uh, uh, 1980s. So that's, that's actually is, was the uh, first wave of neural networks, okay. Uh, you know, initially, if we say, okay, first wave, uh, of neural network is perception, okay, perception. But, but at that time, probably you can only have very few neurons because of limitation of uh, complexity. And then in uh, 1980s, right? So we, we have more powerful computer and uh, as basically the mainframe of the size of the football field now become indeed a personal computer on your desk. Uh, actually, there's a, for, for the uh, academic institution or uh, uh, big companies, it's uh, uh, not just mainframe, there's a more powerful personal computer, we call it workstation, actually, it's had uh, like the, 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 the re representative of those uh, workstations are some macrosystems and SGI workstation, they, 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 are, they have very fancy uh, graphic monitor, graphical and color monitor. At, at that time, most of the monitor, they are, they are uh, single color, right? Single color is a green, basically, it's a green color. So if, if, if you uh, watch some movies at that time, you know, the, the sci-fi movie with Seto's monitor is uh, basically it's uh, uh, green colors. Uh, 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 monochrome monitor. So, so at eight days, then, then the, the, the personal computing and then say, okay, and also there's a computing architecture. So we say, okay, we do, we should do parallel computing. Okay. And uh, neural networks happens to be, you know, kind of distributed computing and then it's, it's come back and uh, uh, it's at that time, this was coined to say that's the sixth generation of computing. Okay, the sixth generation of the computing. And this was uh, the expectation was that it's going to replace uh, the traditional 
uh, computer we call von, von Neumann structure. Okay, then basically it's still the computer of the current structure. And let's say, okay, current structure is kind of, you know, centralized. We want to do distribute it, something like neural network uh, connectors, uh, connectors in that that's the sixth generation uh, of the computer. So it was very hot. It's uh, no less than the hotness of deep learning today. Okay, in in uh, uh, around 1990s. So everything is uh, at that time I, for all the tasks people want to try uh, neural networks, including the, the task we are familiar today. Okay, like uh, uh, speech recognition or uh, image uh, recognition. Uh, like uh, the, 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 the OCR, the optical character uh, recognition, all those people are trying to uh, try your network. If you look at paper published in that time, uh, it, it's, it's pretty much like deep learning today. You know, everything they have that, that word uh, called your networks. And, and there's a booming of the journals. Okay, there's some uh, IEEE in your network society and actually transaction on your network was uh, funded at that time. And uh, because of that uh, uh, wave, so there's a genetic algorithm, fuzzy set, uh, all those uh, computing. So uh, uh, th th those journals, uh, many journals uh, in, in the uh, neural network area. Okay. However, okay, however, uh, again, so there's a, a bust at the end of 1990s. It's basically neural network everywhere, but it's uh, that then people found that uh, it in limited. It's a uh, functionality is still limited. Okay, it's only in a few places. Like actually, the uh, for the handwriting digit is pretty successful, and the neural network based algorithm was used in the uh, by U.S. Postal Office to recognize postal code. Okay, the, you, as you know, U.S. U.S. Postal Code is only numbers, not like Canadian. We we have letters as well. Okay. By the way, that neural network, I believe, is a CNN is convolutional neural network that was that was adopted by U.S. Post uh, Postal Office. But otherwise, including speech recognition, people found the traditional modeling methods, the signal processing method, looks still uh, have better performance than your networks. Okay, so then it comes to disappointment. Okay, that 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 I would say that the bust of the neural network. So at that time in academia, you don't want to you don't want your paper to be associated with the word uh, neural networks. So so much so, and the people change the names of the, their area, right? The IEEE Neural Network Society changed the name called the IEEE Computational Intelligence Society. Okay, uh, that's that's still the name. Okay, if you if you look at the actually different society, the name of uh, initially is Neural Network Society, now it's Computational Intelligence Society. It's still that. That's a home society of the journal IEEE Transaction on Neural Networks, and and. Uh, they they feel that's uh, not a good name for the journal, so they 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 change the journal name as well. It's called Triple E Transaction on Neural Networks and Learning Systems. Uh, that's the still the the name of the journal today. If you if you say what, when the name was changed, that was the, the uh, time. Uh, there's a very low. It's low point of the neural network, but it doesn't mean that people are in. On the other hand, you know, people don't don't do a neural network and say, okay, let's do the machine learning models, right? So there's a lot of probabilistic models such as uh, uh, Bayes networks or uh, uh, probabilistic uh, graphical models, okay? And and those um, the people uh, organized the conference uh, at that time called NIPS, uh, it's neural in, neural information processing conference. Uh, you know, initially it's only like uh, uh, like a hundred people, right? And and uh, uh, last year it's uh, ten thousand people uh, attending that conference. That's a that's a top machine learning conference. Okay, and similarly for computer vision at that at that time it's uh, uh, early 
uh, two, uh, 2000, there's, there's only, you know, 100 or 200 people attending the conference, but now it's uh, uh, attending the conference, it's uh, more than more than 10,000, that's all. So what, one major problems uh, actually we, we see today, is actually not, not just today, all the times, it's basically it's computing resource and the data, okay? So uh, for, for academic research, most, most people have abandoned the neural networks at, uh, after two, uh, 2000, uh, but there, there were a few people we know that they, you know, they uh, got Turing pro Prize, uh, Turing Award a couple of days ago, right? Basically our Canadian uh, guys, uh, Jeff Hinton, uh, uh, Joshua Banjo and Yan LeQuin. Okay, so, so those those are the people who who keep doing the neural network during the downtime. Their paper was rejected, and uh, I think uh, Yan LeQuin uh, have have some essay to to recite the uh, his, his experience uh, getting rejected for his neural network paper. But but then with the computational power, right and. Uh, by the way, the neural network, the fundamentals of neural network back in uh, 90s and today's neural network, there's no fundamental difference. Okay, just, just so you know, te technically, there's not a lot of difference. So, and uh, we, we, we'll talk about the uh, for neural network in 20, uh, uh, I think it's 2012, they, they, they had this, uh, 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 attend this uh, uh, challenge, uh, the image object recognition challenge, and and they improve the performance recognition recognition performance by 10, 20 percent. Okay, that's huge, and uh, and then the uh, neural network has a, a, a very good performance in speech recognition as well, and then after that the study of the neural network has uh, exponential uh, growth. So uh, that's, that's the reason I think uh, right now I have this uh, large class today, okay. Our intelligence system class, I, I taught this class since uh, I think 2006, okay, on and off. So, uh, but, but apparently the registration are, are up and down, okay. So that's a little bit history. And now because of this deep, uh, deep learning, the re resurgence of the neural network, then the AI uh, is at its highest uh, nowadays. And intelligence system basically is uh, everywhere. And remember the deep learning is only a very, uh, I, I would say the subset of intelligence system, right? But because of the, uh, influence of deep learning actually people now uh, are, there are more interest in all areas of machine learning and uh, intelligence system and rightfully so okay because it, it does help us with, with the computing power it does help us in many in many many tasks okay so but on the other hand we we need to uh, realize that the intelligence system it has many components and uh, it has been investigated, it has been developing uh, steadily, I would say, uh, in academia. So there's uh, many uh, algorithms and theory and uh, development in the area uh, it, consistently. It's not, not just today, okay? And actually most of the content in this class is not uh, developed uh, uh, you know, most of theory, they're not neural network theory, okay. Uh, of course, they, they, they are also foundations of a, a neural network uh, and they have been developing the, over the past, I would say the half a century. Okay, so, and uh, we would expect all those uh, techniques, intelligent system techniques have, uh, you know, great development in the next, you know, five, 10, 20 years. Okay, in terms of applications, we know that there's uh, many applications and, and uh, I will talk about a few uh, because those are pretty successful. The first one is automated speech recognition, right? Um, 
And along with the natural language processing, there's uh, basically it's used uh, uh, in our daily life now. Uh, if you have a phone, it most likely has a, a voice assistance like Siri, or in your home, you might have a Google Home or Echo. So those are the uh, today's commercial product that's using the uh, AISR and natural language uh, processing. Uh, also, we can you know have this optical char character recognition. That's actually the the early times, early success, one of the early success of the neural network. Uh, biometrics, okay. Uh, and today we are arguing the uh, privacy issues, right? Especially for face recognition, okay. That's uh, biometrics, and uh, the. The first successful application of biometrics was actually fingerprint identification. Because even before deep learning, we know that when you go through the border, right? And many countries will ask you to leave your fingerprint. That has been used uh, uh, for, for, for a long time, okay? That's before the deep learning. Uh, and the methodology was used at that time was, uh, was not deep learning. Okay, and uh, other things like gate analysis, uh, iris detection, and autograph detection, a lot of biometrics. So those are all can be considered uh, intelligent system, actually, the pattern classification techniques. The other area, of course, related to the life, you know, bi bioinformatics in DNA sequencing, uh, a DNA sequence identification, Motif detection, motif is uh, a group of uh, uh, DNAs that, that can be, uh, uh, it's, it's, that is functional, okay. Microarray analysis, microarray micro is, is, uh, is an array that uh, basically it's like, it's a lot of tubes, right, in a, a build on silicon. And then it can, can be used for, for the uh, genetic, uh, detection. Okay, basically there's an image uh, for a microarray, there's a, a biochemical reaction, and then you take a picture of that, and, and, and then you can analyze that. And genome mapping. Uh, the study of protein uh, structure. Okay, so you start from the DNA sequence, but one sequence that control, can control the uh, the, the, the protein generation, right? We know protein structure is three-dimensional. So there's a lot, a lot of possibilities. And most recently we have this alpha fold is developed by, uh, uh, that alpha fold was developed by, uh, by Google, uh, DeepMind. Okay, we'll get, we'll get there. And uh, this is an example actually, is my, my former students work in the Q speech recognition. This is the combination of the speech recognition and the, the uh, gesture. This is for, uh, this is a set of speech for deaf people. Okay, with the, uh, you know, the, the different lip position plus the, the hand position, and then you know it's 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 a, a, a basically a language is called Q speech that that can be used by uh, deaf people. Okay, uh, the the paper was published in uh, actually this year in IEEE Transaction and Multimedia. And this one is the alpha fold. So uh, this is this is just a couple of months ago. Uh, this is a new say the, the DeepMind AI make gen, gigantic leap in solving protein protein structures. Okay, from this picture, as you can see, it's uh, for the uh, protein structure. It can be very complex. Okay, this three D type of you know folding. Okay, so that's uh, AI protein folding algorithms is solve structure so faster. Uh, ever. As, uh, as, as you can imagine, there, because of there's a lot of possibilities, right? So you need a lot of computations. So, and then of course, uh, robotics. So the industry ro robot, and also people are looking at all type of robots, right? Like the, the household 
uh, housekeeping robots, you know, so you, so you probably have one at, at home for those uh, uh, cleaning robot. And uh, uh, of course, people might be more interested in the, some robots who look like human, right? They come, come moving around and that's uh, need a lot of uh, uh, AI algorithm and intelligence system. And, and another hot topic is in medical imaging and diagnos uh, uh, diagnosis because the, the computer now is good at uh, look at the image and do segmentation, uh, recognition and detection. So this is the a hot topic and people think that it might be able to uh, replace, this is our hope, right? So to replace radiologists to, to look at all the pictures. And then what we're using every day is information retrieval system, right? We are using Google, using Bing when we do search. Okay, that's again, and that's, uh, you know, the, the Google will tell you in one second how many uh, things are search. Okay, that again is uh, need a lot of uh, uh, AI algorithm or uh, pattern recognition, matching, and intelligent algorithms. And then the other thing, you know, we we were surprised why we are receiving uh, certain uh, apps. You know, you talk to his friend or your email friend, and then suddenly the pop up uh, uh, as it. Is exactly related what 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 you just talk about. Okay, that's recommender system. Okay, and uh, 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 so that's uh, that's basically is the business model of uh, the internet, uh, the major internet companies, internet giant, right? So for the uh, Google, uh, Facebook, uh, Amazon. So. Uh, for for uh, basically for social media, uh, Amazon has make make profit from other venue as well. But social media for social media, basically that's uh, where where their income are from. Right? They they have targeted ad to the population, and uh, of course there's uh, associated problems, right? The ethics problems and the privacy problems, but. Apparently, with that big data and with intelligent algorithms, uh, it, it indeed uh, can uh, dig out a lot of information about uh, our preferences. So then, there's a visual event detection. You know, if you look at a piece of video or like sport video, can you capture a certain event? Whether there's a, a go shooting event or a certain uh, other important event. And there's many content management system, right? Like the, you know, if you have a photo al album on your iPhone or Android phone, they manage your pictures and gaming. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, of course you can think of you uh, just by reading the news, this list can go on and on. Okay, so what, what what's our status then? Okay, what's our status? So here, actually, this uh, uh, let let me go to this uh, wiki page. It's have a pretty good summary for a few concepts. Okay. So, so there's a, for the tasks, right? We say intelligent system, basically we are accomplish certain tasks. So there, there are certain, you know, these terms is easy, easy to understand. So for certain tasks, there's a possibly optimal solution, right? If the computer solve the problem, like, like certain puzzles, the computer can, can find the, the best path, then basically it's optimal, right? There, it's not possible to perform better, okay? Of course, some of them actually are explicit. It's like closed form solution actually solved by human. And then you use computer to, to uh, your program computer to, to uh, complete it, right? And then there's a task like uh, superhuman, right? It's performed better than all humans. For, for many, uh, uh, you know, the board games, it's actually performed uh, 
uh, you know, better than all humans. You, you just can't beat the computer. But, but uh, those uh, games, it probably it's hard to say that it's optimal. And then there's high human, basically it can beat uh, most humans, okay? Only uh, you, uh, you, it, it may not be the expert, but it's better than most humans. And then there's a part human means it's uh, similar to most humans. And, and then there's a task, subhuman is basically it's performed worse than most humans. So those are the, some terms uh, that uh, uh, we use to describe the, the status of the technology, uh, of, of the uh, intelligence system, the performance of the intelligence system for certain tasks. Okay, let's look at some example here. So the optimal, uh, for, for the optimal one, right? If you look at this list, uh, it's basically soft games. For, for, for simple games like tic-tac-toe, this type of game, basically the, it's, uh, the computer can be exhaustive, right? So find the optimal uh, solution. So it cannot be better than that. So basically who, who goes first will win for sure. And then the computer can solve that. And for superhuman, that's basically it can beat human, right? So like chess, right? So it's, we, we're not sure whether that uh, the computer is doing every step optimal because that's still a very large space. But, but, but basically the computer is much better than human and that happened for Go game as well, right? The, the, the human just cannot beat the computer. But before you reach the superhuman, and uh, most of the computer is actually pretty much high human, even, uh, for, for, even for chess, before it can beat the, beat the world champion, uh, Kasparov, it's actually already beat most of humans, right? In that case, it's actually the high human. And right now in high human, it's uh, for many games, uh, like the bridge card playing or Starcraft, uh, those games, it can beat most humans. Park human is uh, for recognitions, you know, for optical character, uh, character recognition or handwriting recognition is pretty much has similar performance as human. Uh, for subhuman, there are some, uh, actually there's a lot of tasks is, is uh, subhuman, right? Uh, for speech recognition still, I think it's a, a subhuman in, in that if, if we, for our conversation, if we, we do not, our pronunciation is not standard, right? If the computer is not well trained, it's still not as good as human. Uh, here they have stock market prediction, which I don't agree. I don't think they know they know about that. Uh, you know, the, the human is not good either, uh, for a reason. Okay. So. Uh, let's look at this uh, table a bit in terms of the game, right? Uh, so that we can understand uh, what, what that means in terms of the, uh, the AI progress, uh, just a game, okay. A game, uh, as we can see for, for simple one, right? Uh, Othello or draw, draw it is uh, uh, the, this is the year that the computer beat human, right? Uh, the computer beat human, let's look at chess, as the deep blue, that's in 19, 1997, okay. And for Go, it's uh, uh, not until uh, 2016, right? And, and then there's, a, you know, here, here's the numbers, that's, uh, let me explain a bit in terms of those numbers so that we have an idea. Uh, this line is how many possible combinations on the board, right? Most of them like a, a board game. So what are all possible uh, legal state, okay, uh, in, in, in the game? So as we can see for the chess, uh, th this is log 10, that means it's 10 to power 46, okay? That's a number of legal states on the board. On the other hand, if you look at the goal, right? Why, why in, uh, the computer can beat human in 1997, but only 20 years later, it's, it's, uh, it's go. If you look at the magnitude of the legal states, this one compared to this is almost infinite, right? This is 10 to power one, 
172, right? It's basically one, up to one, and then you have 172 zeros. That, that's the number of states. Okay. And, and not only that, it's basically a sequential game, right? Sequential game is basically if you want to, to do exhaustive search, right? So basically, if you do this state, and then there's a lot of possibility, a lot of rot, right? And it becomes a tree. The, the, whole, the whole game becomes a tree. If you consider all possible uh, uh, games from beginning to end, that game tree complexity is uh, much larger than this, right? Because this is uh, sequentially. We can see the chess, you know, is 10 to power 123, and the goal is 10 to power 360. Okay. Uh, that, that's a huge, a huge number. Basic, I think that number is more than the number of particles in the universe. Okay, that's why uh, there's people with quite uh, permissive of the uh, goal game. Say, okay, maybe the computer will never beat the human. Okay. But, but actually, there is a fallacy in that the logic, right? So the computer may not exhaust all those states or all those complexities, but human cannot either, right? So it, it cannot exhaust all those things. So find optimal solution doesn't mean it cannot do that well enough to beat human, right? That's actually what happened. So if you look at today's uh, uh, computer uh, Go game, is that optimal? I was apparently not because it's not exhaustive, right? If it's not exhaustive mathematically, you cannot claim yourself uh, optimal, right? Unless, uh, you know, if you, uh, unless you have a rigorous mathematical proof or, or, or you exhaust all of those, you cannot claim your, your, your move is optimal, right? So we can safely say that it is opt not optimal. However, it, it, it beat human. And also another thing we want to look at is uh, this line is whether it has perfect information or not, right? Perfect information means, okay, at, at, at every uh, move, I know all the information, right? This happened to all these sequential games because as you are moving, you know all the information. Uh, uh, all historical information. There's nothing hiding from you, right? You, you know the rules, all rules, everything is transparent. Okay, as opposed to some card game, uh, poker game, uh, you have imperfect information because whether your move, it dependent, dependent on secret information of your opponent, right? Let's say if we are uh, playing a Texas Hold'em and you don't know their card, right? You, you know, you, you don't know what they hold, uh, what they hold. Uh, uh, you don't know those information. So those, those kind of imperfect information. In general, uh, apparently the computer are better when they have perfect information. And actually in all those games, I, I would say if, if there's perfect information, uh, the computer uh, has huge uh, advantage because it's just computing fast, right? But with imperfect information, then, then uh, uh, it doesn't perform uh, as well. Uh, also, if you look at the success of today's computer, I would say more or less they have near poor perfect information. If you think about that, they kind of know everything, right? Uh, even even if uh, if we think about the language, uh, the speech recognition somehow uh, they are not exhausting all, this, all the pr pronunciation space. They are basically exhausting every word that, that people can possibly speak, right? If you think about all the literature or all possible sentences, it is a large set, but, but the fact is it's limited, right? If you think about the library of the, uh, you know, of the whole world, Right, all the sentences in one language, um, it's a uh, it's a finite number. Right, so if the computer exhausts all of those, then if it can exhaust all, all of those, it can do pretty well. Right, 
that's actually somehow what's, what's happening, you know, because if, if, if you want to, uh, a computer to do those things well, a computer, you do need to have a very large training set. Uh, literally, you, you know everything about it, okay. So, so that's uh, a little bit uh, insight. But still, uh, we, in terms of predict, okay, when we are going to solve certain programs, I would say it's uh, still very hard to predict that. And here, I think there's uh, uh, some examples in, term of, in terms of people's prediction, right? For example, uh, this one, right? Uh, we know 1960s, that's the first uh, wave of artificial intelligence, right? And uh, uh, in 1957, that's one year after the, the Dartmouth meeting, if you remember, and people predict, okay, one, the, uh, the computer can beat uh, a, a human player in, in chess game. The prediction is 10 year or less. Uh, and uh, uh, is predicted by this Herbert Simon. Okay, it's, it says it, 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 economists actually he's he's a, uh, a computer scientist. He's a computer scientist in artificial intelligence, who won Nobel Prize in 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 uh, economics. Okay, so he, he's not a, a pure economist. He's actually a computer scientist. Okay, his prediction is time or, year, uh, time or less years, but think about it, this, it happens in 1997, right? That's uh, 40 years later. Uh, and then this Ray uh, Kurzweil is a futurist, uh, you know, he's, he's still alive. He has a lot of inventions and uh, uh, a lot of predictions as well because of, uh, he's a futurist, right? In 1990s, he predicted his time or less years. Uh, that's turns out quite accurate. But, but, but on the other hand, this guy made a lot of uh, predictions, right? So uh, I believe a lot of his predictions are not that accurate. Okay, but, but he's, a, he's a very interesting and a very great guy. And you probably heard the word singularity. Actually, he, he is a promotion, a promoter. I'm not sure whether he invented the word singularity in terms of, you know, uh, the you know science fiction type of things, but but he's a big big uh, promoter of that uh, theory in terms of singularity, and he has a you know he has even built a uh, he called university singularity university basically educate people in terms of technology and uh, management and those type of things. Okay, so that's a chess for the goal game uh, because of that uh, the size of the uh, uh, the, 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 the space, right? The solution space. So in 1997, the prediction was that uh, 100 years or more, because if it's only, you know, the, we, we do rational prediction from the numbers, right? He, he's a physicist, so he's, uh, uh, he look at the numbers. We, 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 we look at the numbers uh, we, we just saw the numbers in terms of the complexity between uh, the gap, right? The complexity gap between the chess game and Go game, it's, it's huge, right? It's basically, it's like 10 to uh, power, like, you know, like more than 100 zeros there, right? So it's reasonable that he, he believes it's uh, probably uh, more, than, more than 100 years, okay? So in um, 20, uh, oh, uh, 2007, and uh, this uh, one of the deep blue, deep blue guy uh, predict is 20, 2017 or sooner. And, and that one is a uh, uh, turn out pretty, pretty accurate. Okay. And those two are pretty, pretty good. And uh, I think that's actually uh, a pretty good prediction because 20, uh, 2007, there is uh, the deep learning is not there yet. Okay, I mean it's not that hot yet. It's it it is there. People are not using that uh, that much. Okay, so so basically uh, the point uh, I want to uh, make here is for a particular task, 
uh, it's probably hard to uh, predict when it's going to uh, exceeding uh, human for a particular task. But if you look at the tasks, right, if you look at all the tasks that has a computer has exceed human, if you look, look at the property of the nature of those tasks, pretty much those tasks are well defined or it can be defined. So, so that paradigm is pretty much task by task. Okay. We do chess first, then, then we do go, and then we have another game, right? It's, it's one by one. Okay. That, that is completely different from the human level, what, what, what we are trying to uh, imagine, right? Like science fiction saying, okay, the, the artificial general intelligence, such as, uh, you know, or, or, or we call it AGI, it's a completely different story. Okay. AGI is like, you know, you think and act like human. Uh, that's uh, the definition will be very different. Okay. And for that, I think it's pretty much science fiction. And, and there's many predictions, right? So AGI. You know, people imagine, you know, when, when that would happen. I think most uh, most of them is like, you know, 30, 40 years, right? So uh, the latest is Ray uh, Kurzweil predicting, you know, another 20, 20, 29, right? That's another 20 years. Okay, let's say, oh, I, I, I think uh, most of us probably will live to that day to say what's, what's happening for the uh, AGI by that time. Okay, uh, so the deep learning does caught call, call people's imagination. Okay, and one, one major reason is this task. This task is uh, object recognition. Okay, so basically there's uh, uh, millions of images in this image net. Uh, is uh, people want to recognize. There's uh, more than a thousand objects to recognize. So for give you a picture, you can recognize the object in that. Whether there's a cat or dog or or a desk, or cup and and things like that. Okay, and uh, uh, the the person who initiated this project is a, a female a computing scientist uh, in at Stanford, uh, Fei Fei Li. Okay, he, he, she, she, she collect all those images and uh, using Amazon Turk to uh, label all those images because uh, labeling is, uh, is, is very hard tasks, right? Uh, you know, the basic human need to label all, all, all the things, uh, ground truth. And then you, use, uh, you can use computer to, to uh, you can test your computer algorithms, right? And you can train your computer algorithm and test your computer algorithms. So again, the, uh, the, the way to build such uh, large data set uh, is also because of the development of, of the computational power and computing technology. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible if there's no Amazon, ta uh, 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 Amazon Turk machine, uh, you know, basically he, he, that means you can recruit uh, whoever uh, wants to do the task in the world, right? It wouldn't be possible to label such a large data set. But anyway, the competition start from 2010, okay? And initially people use traditional method and uh, so it's uh, almost, uh, yeah, basically there's about 20 to 30 uh, percent error rate, okay? And the big leap come from uh, 2012. It's called Alex. And Alex was a graduate student of uh, Jeff Kington, our neighbor. So, and if you look at if you look at this, uh, the the first uh, two years, the winners they are industry labs. They they have more compute, computing power, right? But Alex was a just grad student at the university lab, and uh, he what he did is he used a uh, neural network, and he was able to beat all those in industry. Uh, labs by a lot, okay, nine percent. That's that's huge. Okay, and afterwards, okay, this is this is why uh, people recognize the power 
of the neural network, the deep learning. And after that, everything is deep learning, okay? And uh, uh, you know, people play with that and, uh, uh, and, and 2015, it's, uh, uh, it's part human performance. Okay, this is 5.1% error rate. Okay, and then, you know, people can still uh, Im uh, improve that. Uh, you know, it's basically, it's like 3%, 2%, but that's, uh, again, it's a, a fixed data set. And, and then it doesn't make more sense to continue to, to, to do the task in a particular data set than the, the project, the computation was stopped a couple of years ago. But, but this basically ca capture people's imagination. So, uh, because before uh, uh, before this, people would think, okay, recognizing objects, recognizing people, like face recognition, right? Or, or recognize something, you know, we, we think people can do better uh, than the human can do better than computer. But, but once this come in, uh, along with the, success of alpha go alpha zero right in, in go game then suddenly people feel unsafe people think people thought that the, the pattern recognition that people can do better but now computer actually uh, can do better than human in these particular tasks okay that's what caught people's imagination but uh, after you 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 uh, take this course, you will know that those are particular mathematical algorithms for designed uh, that to learn a particular algorithm. Okay, if you have uh, large enough uh, data set and to 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 tune your algorithm, and if you have a high enough computing power, you 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 basically you can get there. Okay, there's no mystery. So that's still, uh, still doesn't generalize to artificial uh, general uh, intelligence. Okay, so unless you can prove everything there, uh, you know, all the tasks can be computed by, you know, using mathematical algorithm in a certain way. And we, we are not there yet. Okay, we just don't know. So I got a, a, a few questions. Uh, one question say, if people label the image, how would the computer be better? Okay, that's a, that, that, that's a very good question. And we will have some uh, mathematical answers later, but just in principle, right? It's like you, 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 you teach someone, right? It, we, when we label it, it it's, it's like we, 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 we're teaching computer. It's called supervised learning, right? It's similar, uh, it's similar to how we teach our kids or we, we learn something. If, if you label enough things, right? If it's representative, then, then uh, the, if the algorithm can remember what, what you have taught, it, then it can possibly do better, right? Because, because the, it's, it's a program, it, it, it doesn't make, uh, mistakes that human might make. Okay, that's just principle. We will have formula to explain uh, wh why, why that is the case. Okay, it's like a simply, a simply case is a statistics, right? If you label enough, the computer can compute these statistics. Okay, and it can compute better than you. So, uh, so it can do better. Okay, that's a that, that's a general statement, but but very soon we will show how how the computer can can use your labels to do better than you. Okay, mathematically. Make sense? Okay. So the others, uh, so so this one we uh, it's it's very amazing, right? Basically, you can you can recognize those those objects. And you think about this com computer is recognizing a thousand in, in this particular uh, task is a thousand classes, right? For human, it's it's probably it's it's hard. You, if, uh, can you recognize a, Can you remember a thousand classes? Uh, I doubt it. 
Okay, let's say if, if you look at the cat or look at the dog, how many classes dog uh, can you remember? Even object name, right? Uh, uh, how many names can you remember? If you can remember all a thousand, uh, I would be very uh, surprised. Okay, now, I think you, 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 uh, you have pretty good memory, but it's different for computer, right? The computer is very easy to remember a thousand names. Okay, so, so, so from computing point of view, it's not surprising. And the other thing is also from the human point of view, it's very uh, surprising and worrisome this, this being in the news uh, in, the past, in the past year. Okay, it's called deep fake techniques. It basically use, use deep learning technique to manipulate uh, the images, videos, audios, right? So we, we, I think you probably all, all saw the news and uh, uh, regarding um, the, the, what this deep fake, uh, deep fake techniques uh, can do, right? So uh, let's say what's, what it means uh, using image as an example, right? So basically you have two people. Uh, this is the source and uh, this is target. There's two different people, right? So there, there, there are different uh, type of things. Uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the underlying, uh, the, the underlying technology is the same, okay? But but uh, it's different tasks. Let's say what, what what are they? One task is facial reenactment. So basically, let's say you have you have a target face, right? Then you have source. If source have different uh, gaze or mouth. Uh, a movement or expression, right? Basically, I want to move the expression of, of this person to the target person, right? So look, the face is the target person, but, but the uh, case, the expression are from the source. Okay, you can, you can move it there, okay. Or you can do the a face replacement. Okay, you, you, you basically, you, you move this face to uh, this person, okay, the face off. And uh, you probably have an app, okay, to do the face editing a according to the source. Okay, you can do face uh, editing. You can change the hair, uh, put the glasses, and to say, okay, what's the aging, right? So this make it older, or it can, if you want to take a selfie, you can make yourself look younger, right? Or make it, uh, you know, prettier. Or you change yourself to a different uh, ethnicity. And uh, others uh, uh, face uh, synthesis. Okay, you basically you 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 change your face to anyone. So this one, we, we have seen that this uh, is uh, pretty successful uh, in, met, uh, in many applications. Okay, so much so that when you uh, saw a video, uh, a, a surprising video on YouTube or whatever, then you, you have to think whether it's real or synthetic video, right? Synthetic video or synthetic image. So this one, again, capture people's imagination okay but but if it lo lo look deeper in this um you know, it, it is a great achievement but it's still mathematical okay so and uh, the neural network happened to be good at in terms of capture the component of the face or the component of the voice such that you can modify that uh, component uh, in, in, in that face space, so to speak, okay? It can, it can capture those, those things. And if you modify certain component, it will change your uh, expression, modify another component, it will change your hair or things like that. Okay, it's a pretty much think about, you know, as electrical uh, engineering students, you all know Fourier analysis, right? Frequency analysis. We know how to manipulate frequency, right? If you want to remove certain frequency or enhance certain frequency, that's called filtering, right? So the, the 
fundamental principle is pretty much similar to that. Uh, instead of decompose the phase into different frequency, uh, the signal into different frequency, this kind of def decompose the phase into the different phase component. And we call that process as learning, right? And then it, the, you know, the, the, the real amazing thing is that it's learned very well, okay? And such that you can manipulate those frequency component per se to achieve uh, this type of effect. Okay, but still uh, this is a particular task. Okay, and you have to have a very large data set to learn uh, this type of space, those frequency component. Okay, the good thing is actually is learn yourself. You know, in the past we are trying to use analytical method, right, to to learn to 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 say okay whether there's a principal component or whether a certain frequency represent this 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 audio, and then we can synthesize. That's a traditional method. You know, we kind of, uh, we, we'll talk about that system uh, later, but now we actually can learn those components and it learn very well through a huge amount of the data, through the big data. Still, you need to have label data, okay? So, so that's what's amazing. Okay, so let's have a break. Uh, let's have a, a break, five minutes, uh, Washroom break coming back for thirty two. Okay.
Okay, so let's uh, come back. So we gave some introduction of the AI. Uh, so hopefully we, we have some insight uh, in terms of you know, also some questions in terms in terms of what 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 what, what we are expecting uh, of the future of the AI. Okay, so uh, basically, as we can see, uh, there there are two things, right? One thing is that the what enable this AI is uh, uh, computing power. Okay, so uh, all the turn of the AI and all the waves. Of, of AI intelligence system are indeed driven by uh, computing power. Computing power has two aspects. One aspect is the data storage, right? How, how, how much data you can look at it, uh, you, 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 you can look at. And a second is how much processing power you can process those, those data, you can, you can compute it, right? You can compute. So if you think about the first one related to computing storage, uh, the other thing is when we say intelligent system, when we say learning, we're basically, what, 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 what do we learn, right? We learn from data, okay? Or, or it's, we learn directly or indirectly from the data, right? So indirectly from the data, actually, if I transfer my knowledge to a computer, it's kind of, I learn from the data, right? It's kind of indirectly. Uh, domain knowledge is indirectly learning from the data. And, uh, or you just look at the data and uh, directly learn from the data. Okay, and for a particular task, because then you need to do a lot of computation, right? So those are kind of the, uh, there's a word, so say electricity, uh, the electricity is a, it's fundamental resource. Fundamental resource is the one is the data, the other is the computing power. Okay, uh, so it's actually it's, it's a real electricity, right? Without electricity, you, you don't uh, you, you don't have computing power either. So so that's a uh, that's a fundamental dri uh, uh, driving force, and then based on that is computing algorithms, right? Computer algorithm. What's computing uh, computer algorithm? It's a mathematical algorithm. So. The innovation lies in the uh, the those mathematical algorithms. How you construct the way uh, to to learn? How you construct the way to process the data, so to speak? Okay, so so that's what what we're looking at. And uh, and right now, uh, the other thing we we have mentioned is that it's pretty much all the uh, algorithms, uh, especially for for the end application is pretty much uh, task oriented, depending on what task you are doing, right? Of course, uh, the mathematical algorithm, they can have similar structure, but for the tasks, you, you really need to, uh, all, all our advancements are pretty much task oriented, okay? We, we don't have a, a universal uh, algorithm or universal machine saying, okay, is the, I, I have done this machine and as long as I give you a task, you solve the task uh, yourself. That's, uh, that's actually so-called AGI, right? If you, you know, basically without, you know, you, you just teach this once and then it can self-learn and then it can process the everything and accomplish task itself. So uh, as I mentioned that we are not there yet and we are far from that, from our current computing uh, architecture or computer uh, paradigm. Okay. Uh, I will substantiate those uh, uh, statement with, with more technical details uh, as we are, we are going on. Okay. So if you think about it, all these amazing things, because we, you are this uh, AI generation, right? You think, okay, like deep fake or this type of things are very, very amazing that we can use the computer to do. But, but uh, from the electrical engineering point of view, if you think about the Fourier transform, how we can use, use Fourier transform and Maxwell equation to have accomplished so much 
And that's also amazing, right? Think about if you are you were born a hundred years earlier, right? Uh, think about that is not your change phase. Think about your people have invented the uh, telephone, right? And uh, they, they or the, the this uh, wireless uh, radio, and people are able to convert the voice into electromagnetic wave. That we know we are using for transform all the time, right? That's I think it's it's no. Uh, uh, it's probably more exciting than this face changing, right? So, so that's the uh, I think the essence of the technology uh, advancement. At least as as we are learning this, we we need to uh, realize what's the ground of that. There, there's no sudden uh, surprising. It's basically what we uh, behind that. There's a uh, uh, step by step mathematical uh, algorithm and uh, advancement there. Okay, so so we start from the simplest example, right? Because many of them, uh, those tasks are actually pattern classification tasks. So so let's think about the simple uh, pattern classification problems. Uh, this one is the fish classification. Assuming there is such fishery uh, company, they want to uh, automate their fish packing department. Okay, so sorting. Normally, as human operators will sort fish for uh, further uh, processing. Uh, so now the question is that can we have an uh, intelligent system to sort fish arriving on this uh, uh, convoy according to species and, and to make uh, the, the, the task simpler. We are only looking at two species, the sea bass and salmon. Okay, so basically the, the question is, uh, there are only two types of fishing, uh, two types of fish. Can we, can we discriminate them from one another? Okay, the sea, sea bass and salmon. So how are you going to do this task? Right, so they don't they don't tell you what they are, right? So we start from the observations, okay? So some of uh, the uh, some fish here are salmon, and some of them are uh, uh, sea bass, okay? So assuming you are labeled, they are labeled, right? Then you, you try to learn what's the difference between them, okay? So. Yes, here's salmon, here's sea bass. Okay, those are examples, you know, for those it's labeled, this is one class, this is another class. Okay, so how we are going to discriminate two type of fish by just by looking at them. Right, so uh, here uh, we, we do have a benefit of the human expert uh, on hand is basically so, uh, that's somehow is answering the 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 the, the question, uh, you know, the the uh, of the first half saying, okay, if uh, we we are labeled that, how can computer be better, right? Let's go through this process, okay? So the uh, basically we have the human that label this, okay. And then if we want to, want to learn from those uh, uh, label data, what, what do we do? Okay. So we need something to measure the object, right? Uh, so, so we need measurement. And we need, basically that's a sensing we, we discussed last week, right? You, you need to observation, need to, need to assess. And we need to collect, collect those measurements then classify it with a possible outcome, okay? That's how uh, human uh, uh, do the task. That, that is also how computer do the task, right? For human, we look at it, you know, we, we sense them, right? And then from that sense, we look at the image or, you know, uh, we, we uh, hear, hear the sound sometimes, right? The, the, depending on what it is, or sometimes we smell. Uh, and then we, 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 we process them, our brain process them, then uh, uh, recognize them. 
Okay, before I move on, I saw a question there. Uh, do you think uh, the current architecture is impossible to achieve anything in general? Uh, I, uh, that, that, that I wouldn't... Uh, so so uh, the short answer, the short answer is yes, okay. Current architecture, but again, what 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 do, what is the current architecture, right? So we have a lot of algorithms, uh, you know. We have we have a lot of different architectures, right? We we don't have a uniform architecture. Uh, you, uh, when we ask question, then the next question is could be more specific. You say, okay, with current deep learning architecture or with current neural network architecture, uh, when it's impossible to achieve anything. Uh, general and again, what do we mean? Anything general, right? So we have to, uh, you know, if if I, I I know what you're trying to say, but uh, in terms of this question, the short answer is, is no. But 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 to be able to answer that accurately, we have to modify the question, right? You have specific questions. Say, okay, use this deep learning architecture. Uh, can we achieve such and such general task? Okay, but. But uh, most likely the answer will be no. Okay, so so uh, as we go on, if you have uh, most, you can ask that question more specific. And also I can, I, I will, uh, 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 when we talk about uh, the technical details, anything related to that, I will explain. Okay, so I hope that uh, somehow answer your question. We, we have so many algorithms, I'm, I'm you know, people, uh, if there are some new architecture, it won't born from nowhere, right? I'm sure it has relations. Uh, assuming there's some AGI architecture, I'm sure it has relations with today's technology or algorithms. Okay. Okay, so let's come back to that. So basically we need to observe and then we need to process. Okay, so, so what's, what do we measure? Right, so there are many things we can we can measure in terms of the uh, you know here a bunch of things that we can look at. Right, we can look at the length of the fish, or lightness of the fish. You know whether it's dark or it's light, or the width, or uh, other other features. Right, number of fins, or the shape, right, or eye and the mouth, their position, or their color. Many things we can we can look at. Right, to discriminate the two. Okay. So, uh, but we have to start from somewhere, right? So the first thing, let's say, let's just pick one, right? Let's say, uh, let's say if we, let's just measure the lens to say, okay, if we measure lens, how we're we going to classify that? Okay, so so this is the uh, uh, the lens of two classes, and uh, this graph is called histogram. Okay, so basically here. Uh, assuming we have a, uh, you know, a, a, a set, a group of labeled fish, okay, and then we just we just measure each of them, all the lengths. We need to measure all all the lengths, and this uh, assuming it's centimeters, okay, and we say, okay, how many fish are in each uh, each bin, right? Each bin is like you know one, one, within one, one, one cm, okay, one, one centimeter. We, we count the number of them, then we, we, we say uh, the distribution of each classes. And from, from these classes, apparently, we, we, we realize that in general, right, the sea bus is likely to be longer than a salmon. Uh, than, than, than a salmon. Right? So from here, we can see our oh, sea bus is likely to be longer than this. Then, then we, we, we can classify them by length. So basically we're saying that if it's uh, long, then it's sea bus. If it's short, then it's salmon, right? But then what do you mean it's long? Or what do you mean it's short, right? How long is long, how short is short, right? Here, we're saying, okay, let's set up a threshold. Okay, if it's longer than 15 uh, centimeters, it's sea bus. If it's shorter than 15 centimeters, then, then, then it's a uh, salmon, right? We can set up the threshold. So where do, where do we set up the threshold? 
right? By what criteria? You can set up the threshold everywhere, right? Okay, so, okay, so there's a uh, answer, say with the least arrow, right? With the least arrow, because we know that uh, there, there could be, you know, the, 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 there are C bus and have the same, you know, whatever length it is, there, there could be a large salmon or there could be a smaller C bus, right? This happens all the time. You know, if you think about it, you want to classify male students and female students, we know that the male is uh, generally longer, right? So, but, but there are tall uh, women and there are short men as well, right? So it's, uh, it's a similar things. So wherever you pick that threshold, there's going to be some, some samples misclassified. Okay, so you, you say, okay, you say we, we can uh, have a criteria say, okay, error. But what do you mean by error? You know, so you, you can misclassify salmon to CBUS. You can misclassify CBUS by salmon, right? So I assume when you say error, you mean total error, right? Because you have two types of error, right? So when we say total error, you, you say everything when we ask these questions, there's a follow-up question, right? So when we say error, we are actually saying that uh, those two errors, we treat them the same, right? We treat two types of mistake the same. Yeah, misclassification and mistakes is the same as error, right? But at least here, you know, we will talk about that later. But apparently when we say total error, there's two types of error, but we treat them the same, right? We add them up. Okay, so if we do that, then, then the, the optimal uh, threshold is here, is at uh, 11, uh, about 11 here, this uh, dashed line. Okay, we'll explain why later, okay. Okay, so that that we have we basically we have a simple classifier, right? It's very simple. Just we just if let's say the intelligence system can somehow measure the lens, how to measure that's another issue, right? <laughs> the, the design the sensor. But assuming we can measure the lens, and then once we have lens, we just need to compare. It's very very easy, very fast. We compare whether it's larger than eleven centimeters or, or or smaller than 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 eleven centimeters. Okay, so so. Uh, uh, then we, we, we have a classifier, right? We have an intelligent uh, system to do the task. So let's look at what we have done here. So first we need to have a sensor, right? So, so basically uh, if it's an image, right? Let's say you have a camera, then it's, uh, we have a digital image, right? Then when we take that image, we need to have pre-processing, right? In pre-processing, basically, we need to segment the fish. It has a background. We need to isolate the fish from the background. And if it's a, a lot of them, then we need to isolate one from another, right? So prepare the data is already a lot of tasks, right? And also, uh, you know, if you take an image, if the image quality is not good, you, you might get rid of that, right? So uh, actually, in all the uh, AI tasks, okay, the pre-processing, the data preparation often uh, take you 80% of the time or 80% of the resource, okay. <clears throat> so we have pre-processing. Now we have this, uh, uh, assuming we have a good image, right, we, we segment uh, uh, each of them, okay. And then what we need to do is we need to uh, it, do the feature extraction because we have the fish image, but then we, we need to we need to uh, extract the features. Basically, what measurable attribute we want to use for classification, right? So that term we call it feature. We use the term feature in the hope that that choosing attribute means feature will will be uh, will contain the information to solve our problems. Okay. 
So that, uh, in our example, is a lens, right? Then we, we need to have a model. So we basically assume these two species, uh, they, they are product of two different models. Their lens are different, right? They, they, they have uh, uh, their own lens model. So if, if those two, they, they have the same type of lens distribution, same model, then, then, then that feature is not good, right? And uh, here's the assumption is that the, the lens model are going to be different, okay? And then we need to form that model. How do we form that model? Okay, that actually come into place of that label, right? We, we don't, we know that different, but we, we don't know how different, right? So we use, we use the label data to find out that histogram, we find out their distribution, right? That actually is the question, how, how we are going to use the label data to do the task. And, and those, those samples, we call training samples because the, those are to, to understand the, those features, those distribution. Once we have that, then the next time I'm going to have a new image, right? So uh, I'm, I'm, go I'm not going to uh, process the label data, it's already known. And, and once I'm equipped with my classifier, I'm going to uh, process an unknown uh, sample, right? So in this case, we have a very crude model based on histogram of the lens as a measurement of training samples. Okay, uh, so the model is the different range of the lens for each population of the fish. And then in this case, we apply a rule, the decision threshold to discriminate between two populations, right? So then the question is, is this rule adequate? Okay, is this, is this good enough in this process, right? So the first thing we know that, uh, the first thing is not good enough in that it's ambiguous, right? There, there are error rate, right? There, there are mis mistakes. Okay, so, so basically if I set threshold here, and anything red on left uh, uh, on left side uh, is mistake, is an error. Uh, and anything on the uh, right side, black, is an error. Okay. So for a particular uh, feature, yes. Uh, you, you have a comment, you know, it's probably the best you can do uh, for this feature. Okay. But, but, but there, there is another, another thing, okay, another caveat, okay. So when we say the best, uh, we are say it, it's error rate, right? So let, let, let me ask you, if we do this, right, if we do this, is it true that we actually minimize my classification errors? It's a simple question, right? Simple problem. But so looking at this histogram and then if we do this, we say, okay, now we have classifier. And then we, I go out, I claim, I say, okay, my classifier using the lens, the, you know, just use this threshold, this, will for sure give me the minimum uh, error rate. Is that the right statement? Okay. Any, any thought? So there's answer say no on the C by side, there is a high chance, but the error rate, right? So if from here, if you change, if you switch this, the error rate will be higher. Basically the number of errors will be higher. We'll, 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 we'll get there later, but, but that's not, not what, what I want you to pay attention to. Uh, 
I don't see how you could do better if the only metrics is this one. Okay. So so that's reasonable. But but what else we can we can uh, you know uh, even if with the lens right if you want to do better what else we can do. Assuming we only use the feature of the lens. Okay, you're thinking about things too complex. How about this? How about this? If I get more label samples, is it possible? I might do better. Okay, you see where, where I'm going to, right? So, yeah. So, so when we say that this one achieve minimum number of errors, it's really on the on the known training set, right? We we really don't know that for 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 other samples whether this threshold still have minimum number of errors, right? Right, it's simple thought process, but, but this actually is a, it's very profound. In, it, it applies to uh, you know, all the learning process. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to that. Okay, so this looks the best for, for this training set, but 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 what if we have more label? Uh, you know, if you have more label data set, this may not be bad. It might might shift, right? And I and I, and I can assure you, uh, it will shift. But which one's better? Okay, that's uh, that's another question. Okay, so I just gave you, uh, you know, basically we are answering whether that's uh, uh, adequate, right? Okay, you 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 have you have a few questions regarding because I kind of opened the Pandora's uh, box. Okay, I'll get back to that uh, later. Okay, so in terms of the uh, in terms of all those criteria and problems. Okay, but it is a Pandora's box. Okay, so so then in terms of a criteria, right? Uh, so. What uh, coming back to that arrows, we say okay. Uh, we when we say minimum arrow, we're actually treating the two misclassification arrow the same, right? But the classification, the cost of the arrow could be different, right? If salmon is much more expensive than than the sea bus. If you misclassified salmon to sea bass for the seller, it might not be a good thing, right? So the mistakes, the two types of error may not be equal. Some may be worse than others, right? But which one is worse? In this particular example, depending on who you ask, right? If you ask the sellers, uh, he would say that, okay, if you misclassify my high, high price stuff to, to low price stuff, that's bad, right? But if you ask consumer, that's the uh, other way around, right? Okay, so so this one is actually uh, you know this say salmon accidentally in sea bus it can be uh, okay, but if uh, sea bus in salmon is uh, not good here. It's, uh, if from the vendor point of view, the sea bus probably have higher price, higher cost, right? So okay, so that's uh, that's what's keep in mind. So so basically, when we talk about what's the best, uh, you you need to have a cost function, right? It's not the cost, the best cost function is not ne necessarily minimum number of errors. Okay, uh, that's the whole point. 
Okay, because you you uh, some of you did uh, mention that was a mean square error or whatever. So, but whatever uh, you you use, you are actually saying okay, this is my cost function, right? But your cost function has to make sense for a particular problem. Okay, so in this case, if if they have different costs, yes, uh, you are right. So if you want to consider that, may put that into consideration then you would have waited, right? You need to wait two arrows, depending on how important that arrow is to you, you have a weight. And that weight is another thing, right? The weight, that, that, how do you decide the weight, right? So decide the weight, I think the, in this particular case, they're pretty much related to the price, right? That's a prime knowledge has nothing to do with this data, that's another data. Or how important it to you as a, as an owner of, uh, of, of the fishery, right? So that's actually, you know, as, as we are continuously asked ask these questions, you, 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 you can see, right? Because coming back to that uh, AGI question, right? So uh, if you need to decide so many things beforehand, uh, that apparently it's not, a, it's not a artificial general intelligence, right? Okay, so alternative, you say, okay, I can, maybe I, uh, instead of using uh, the feature of lens, we might use feature of lightness to say uh, which one is dark and which one's light. Okay, and the salmon is darker and sea bass is lighter. We, we do the same thing and we can find the lightness of, assuming we can quantify the lightness, right? We can do the same, same thing. Right, but how alternative. So, so this one from the arrow point of view looks like this, uh, the, the number of arrows smaller, right? So we can use different features, okay. So uh, the classification, right? Uh, basically we have, uh, 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 you know, the, the examples would be a biometric systems. We, we basically want to learn the biometric signature, right? And, and what, 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 what I've just seen is, is kind of, it's the simplest case, right? The lens and lightness, both of them, we can consider that as a biometric uh, signatures of fish, right? For human, we have other things. We, it, we said that uh, the examples include the fingerprint gate, that's walking pattern or your signature, right? your autograph. Uh, face or facial expression, iris, okay. And and in reality, what, what we just said is a fish, you know, the, the cost is the price, right? The the profit. But, but in many other cases can be very mission critical, right? So the incorrect classification could be detrimental. Remember in last class, I gave an example, I say, okay, if you want to kill a terrorist and, and you have a picture, you want to use fish recognition and then use the guided uh, missile to kill the terrorist. Uh, that causes the, 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 the false alarm, right? That error cost would be very high, right? Because you, if, you, if you recognize the wrong person, it's, uh, the cost is uh, the life of the person. Right. But on the other hand, you know, if the, 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 the example we gave is a cause that you, 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 you miss this guy is probably uh, the nuclear attack of, uh, let's say, the city of Toronto. Right. So there's a, you know, in reality for those mission critical tasks, the cost could be detrimental. You have to, uh, but those has to be considered very carefully. Okay. So that's related to the decision theory, right? So you have classification, but that's related decision. So that's a relationship between the choice of the decision boundary and associated uh, cost. So you want, you want your decision boundary such that your cost is minimized, not just error, right? So that you need to convert your error to the cost, okay? Now, what if the minimum cost is still unacceptable, unacceptable, then you abandon your algorithm, right? So, okay, this, this uh, algorithm doesn't work. You, you basically, you fail the task, right? 
Then what do you do? Develop a new one, right? You consider additional features, right? This happens all the time. So uh, then, then if you, we, we want to, you know, if uh, one feature is not good, we consider another feature. Uh, oftentimes, the, uh, the single feature is not enough. You need to consider multiple features together, right? So now, with each training sample of the fish or each sample of the fish, now we actually represent this uh, sample into a measurement a vector. We call it feature vector. We have, in this case, we have two dimension. Assuming we consider two things, uh, the lightness and width, right? Then we have uh, we have a vector, feature vector, a multi-dimension, right? And in reality, if we want to do it very well, we can we can imagine this could be a very long, uh, very large size vectors. Okay, and so this is the first. Uh, uh, you know, formulation. That's why the mathematics algorithm is so important, right? Because at the end, we're, we're dealing with uh, uh, those vectors. Okay, two-dimensional space is certainly better than one dimension, right? Assuming, uh, of course, this is this is two things, uh, not length. This is waste and this is lightness, right? If we only do waste. Is, is, is apparently is not good enough. And uh, if you only do lightness, also we have a lot of errors. But if you do two together, you know, we can, we can have a, you know, jointly, we can have a decision boundary, right? That is better than the single features. Okay, so this line is actually the weighted features, right? We, uh, the, this feature and this feature, they have different weight. Then we have decision boundary of the line. That's two dimensional. So then what feature space sh should we work on, right? The, the simple rule is uh, uh, we want to work in a feature space that, that two classes have good separation, right? And hopefully we I can use the simple classifier to classify that. For example, if I can use a line, it's a linear classifier, right? It's, it's like a threshold, it's multi-dimensional threshold, right? So then we have, a, uh, it's a good separation, right? So in general, if I have more features that might improve the decision, again, we cannot say that for sure. Okay, I will explain why. And how do we know which additional features are good, right? And some features may be redundant because one feature is, is uh, uh, those features that are correlated, right? Because one feature probably uh, uh, can possibly cover uh, the information of another feature. And can we have too many features, right? If you have too many features, it could muddy the water, uh, water as well. And if you, you have too many features, you have very large feature vector, that means your model is more complex, right? Your boundary is more complex. If one dimensional, I just compare to a number. Two dimensional, I need to compare with a line. Three dimensional, I need to compare with a surface, right? What about four dimensional, five dimensional, right? What if in today's world, we could have the feature like, you know, a thousand or millions of features. It's, it's much more complex. There's a complexity, right? So, so and ideally you say, okay, in an ideal world, we say it's 100% accurate, right? For this particular case, can we find the bound, boundary that's 100% uh, accurate? Right? So in this case, we can, okay, we can, if, if we can have a nonlinear classifier, we do this, it's actually 100% accurate. But what's the problem of that? You, you say overfitting, well, what does it mean by overfitting? So, uh, basically here, yes, the word is overfitting, but basically what, what it says is that 
even if you can classify all these guys, but you are not sure whether this boundary is still good for the next guy that you don't know, right? Okay, so, okay, and I have a few questions, let, let me see. Uh, for fish, for, uh, for choosing the feature, do we calculate the correlation? Okay, well, we have a systematic way to look at the correlation between the features. Okay, yes. Yes, it's, uh, we talk about that or fitting, yeah, new samples, yes. Okay, I think you are, you have good understanding of the overfitting. You are you are you are always uh, so uh, uh, that's why I I think last class I I, I told you there's nothing a hundred percent right. Okay, so basically the, the overfitting is to for the training uh, set right. Then in test set. You know, for unknown data set, there's a, it's basically a generalization, right? So, uh, so whether we, we can generalize our classifier to un, unknown samples. Okay, it's a, it's a trade-off. So overfitting is a best performance. It's, it's can happen when you have, have best performance on training set, but for unknown pat patterns, you don't know, right? So how do you uh, alleviate uh, uh, that uh, uh, problems. Okay. So we start from the uh, the, the uh, uh, last one. If we have simpler models, we have fewer pro parameters. Uh, in general, it could possibly have a more more general solution. Uh, more, more it's it it can be. Uh, better in terms of the generalization. Okay, so a simpler model, like uh, between the linear model, right? So in general, this one probably generalized better than this one, although the performance of this one is not going to be as good as this one on training data set. Okay, but again, uh, we, this is, this is uh, uh, just a, a sum of rule rather than uh, the, 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 the absolute ma mathematical proof, okay. So, but, but how, how do we evaluate that, right? Those are the questions we, are, we, 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 we will need uh, to answer as the, the course go on. Uh, also, if you have too many features, that, that can be the problem, right? Let's say for a particular uh, 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 classification, right? You, you have one particular uh, 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 features. Let's say in this group of uh, salmon and sea bass, that happen to be this the fin of the salmon, uh, you know, uh, or cut, for example, right? If you use that feature, you can you can be uh, you, it can be perfect. However, because it's, it's artificial, it won't apply to an unseen sample, right? So you need to be careful there uh, as well. Okay. Uh, also, the, here's another thing, right? So this actually happened a lot in the uh, uh, in the black box uh, method. So so basically, uh, what happened? We we say okay, why if it's transparent? At least we say okay. In this case, we say lens. Right, we say salmon is uh, longer than than the uh, uh, the the sea bass. Okay, so this is transparent. We know why this guy, uh, why we make that decision. We say from the lens, right? If it's black box method, that's you input the image and output just tell you a salmon or sea bass. You may not know which feature played uh, that role. In in that case. Uh, that feature could be biased toward the training data. Okay, you, you see my point? It could be that, like, you know, for a particular li lighting condition, right? You happen to pick up that lighting condition for your particular camera. Okay, if, if that lighting has changed, 
then it 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 it, it could 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 be a problem, right? So so that's the uh, one one thing. Okay, we'll get back to that again. So the 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 thing. Well, one reason people sometimes uh, uh, it's not that confident to a black box method like neural network because in black box you start from the raw data but you don't really know which feature it actually used to make the decision. Okay, so. The trade-off, we say linear is not, not that good, but, but you know, that uh, uh, curve is not that good. Well, what if be in between, right? So it could be better to say, okay, what if it's quadratic? So uh, those, those are the issues that we actually, the options we, we can have. Okay, so basically there's different models in terms of classifier, whether it's linear or quadratic or neural network, Okay, all type of classifier, right? So when we consider that, those are the factors. But uh, here, I we we don't have a universal universal rule, uh, or at least not universal absolute rule to to say okay, this classifier must be better than another. Okay, we will have to look at the specific problem and data set. Okay. So uh, let's uh, come back to say for pattern recognition systems, right? So what is, what is the general structure and the general design cycle uh, in this uh, uh, pattern classification system? Okay, so it's, it's very good you are, you are engaged in, in generating all those questions and comments. Okay, we, 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 we uh, right now we discuss at the high level, we haven't discussed the solutions right keep those questions in mind and uh, as we go on we'll get yeah uh, more and more detailed answer to those questions so for pattern classification uh, systems so this is basically starting from the input here is the uh, 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 process this is the bottom up process no matter what type of system it is right it's all follow this type of process okay it starts from the sensing. Okay, sensing is a measurement, right? Whatever we do first, we need to sense the our target, our object. Okay, and uh, uh, from the low level to high level, high level, the highest level is the decision, right? Okay, so we start from the sensing. Uh, the sensing is, uh, you know, the sensors, right? Sensors, what we know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, camera, right? Capture the image or video. And actually there's different camera as well, right? You can have depth camera or infrared camera or regular camera. And you can have, pick up the sound, right? The microphone, microphone array. Or you can have a bump switch that's uh, for a robot. Or you can sense the temp temperature. All type of the uh, sensors can be used. And uh, apparently there's uh, limitations for different sensors, right? Uh, you know, it uh, can be uh, hardware or you know, uh, the, the cost of you know, you know, the physical environment, right? Uh, the regular camera may not work well in, in, in a dark room. <coughs> and uh, the, the uh, microphone array may not work, work well if it's uh, too noisy, you know, very noisy uh, environment. Okay. And then once you sense the data, you collect the data, then you need to do pre-processing, right? With that, we uh, basically you need to do segmentation, that to, to, to segment and grouping. So, so based for your particular problem, you need to identify uh, your, your samples. Okay, so, so what basically you need to identify your target. Okay, what well, what you're looking at? So the example could be like you know for speech, right? You need to uh, separate, you know, the the speech segment, which part you're going to recognize, or if a different person, uh, different people, then you need to segment each person, right? For the for the video sequence segmentation, then then you probably want to segment different shot. Okay, if it's a, a football or or a, a golf, 
or basketball, at least you need to segment whether it's a it's a it's the game or or it's actually other uh, irrelevant event, right? So you need to have event detection, sync classification, etc. So, for example, uh, here is like uh, is a video shot segmentation. It's that you know this is one thing, this is another thing, right? So basically, uh, you want to make sure. Uh, you want to segment the video, so uh, that is a unit of your sample for you to do your classification or recognition tasks. For support video, right? So you you need to say, okay, whether it's uh, uh, in the middle field or it's uh, uh, on, uh, in the uh, specific uh, goal region. So for input sequence, you need to have that type of uh, uh, classification. Uh, actually, the more general, you know, if you have a piece of sport video, probably the first thing is you need to figure out what sport it is, right? That's a type of general categorization. And then you need to have some type of middle level view labeling, like whether it's long view or it's whether it's close up, right? So you need to have those type of high level event uh, detection, uh, whether it's a, a score event, right? Whether it's a go event, it's a shoot. So that's the segmentation. Once you have segmentation, and then as we mentioned for the fish example, we need to extract particular features, okay? Whether it's lens or uh, light nays or things like that. So, so how do you, uh, you know, for feature extraction, you know, the feature is also related to a, a classifier, right? So, so if, if you have a very good features, probably a simple classifier uh, can, can, can accomplish your task, right? If your feature is not that good, you might need a very powerful classifier, okay? So, so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all possible, right? And also it's actually go back to sensing, right? So, so if your, your, your sensor can pick up the good measurement, then you probably don't, don't need to have a very good classifier, right? But on the other hand, you, if, it, if we look at, uh, look at this, uh, all the information is the input, right? Uh, uh, so, Everything you're doing here is information processing. Information processing or signal processing will only reduce the, uh, make your information less and not more, right? So uh, basically what I'm saying that if in the, let's say you have you have a trivial feature extractor, there's the, the performance has a limit depending on how much information you are there, right? So basically, even if you use optimal classifiers, probably you, you know the if if your feature is is not is not that good, then then you have performance limitation. This is like what, what we showed in terms of lens, right? If you look at lens of the fi uh, of the fish, you have, uh, there are only so much you can do because for sure there's overlapping, right, between two species of fish. The lens are not going to perfectly discriminate the two. However, good is your classifier. Okay, so we have to be careful here. So the smart move uh, is to focus more uh, to increase, basically on the bottom, right? If you can have uh, better sensors, go for it. Right. If you have better features, go for it. And then you move down, right? Only if my image is not so good or you know my, my sensor is not so good, then I try to extract good features. Only if, if my feature is not good, is uh, very noisy, then I try to improve my classifiers. Right. As you down the stream, it's uh, the uh, the problem actually become harder. So basically, if the feature is not good, there's not much you can 
uh, you can do with a classifier. It's an extreme case, let's say if it's a, in a dark room, you cannot discriminate uh, anything anyway, right? For the human brain, it's the same thing. So for deep learning on your network, it's the same, okay? So basically you have to have that information, right? Well, once we have that information, we would worry whether we are using the wrong information, right? But if you don't have information, there's nothing you can do. Uh, it's basically it's called, there's a word called gar garbage in, garbage out, right? If if the input is the, is the garbage, there's no information. However good is your classifier, you're not going to generate a good result. The result is going to be uh, super failures. It's, it's going to be wrong. Okay, so there's a specific question asking for a neural network uh, black box model whether the regular uh, regularizer would 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 help. It might help, but the regularizer is basically it's domain knowledge, right? We, we try to uh, we try to uh, constrain certain things. If we know certain feature is uh, uh, is not the right feature, we we try to get rid of those. Okay, to pull that that back to certain thing. That's kind of uh, that's the essence of a regularizer, uh, regularizer, right? So it certainly can help. But again, the word is it depends. And particularly for deep learning, right? For deep learning, that's uh, uh, basically in general for neural network. Uh, so depending on how much you manipulate that, okay? Let's say if you start from the in image, in a fish recognition case, if you start from the image, you say, okay, I don't measure the lens. I just input the image into the, uh, into the network. And what happened is it will learn by itself, okay? And uh, uh, what what what, uh, what we have that uh, this is the whole thing is, is black box, but by by dissecting that black box, right? This is afterwards after people have trained for this uh, 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 type of uh, uh, networks. Then then people look at all oh, what what's the output of each uh, layers, right? or a group of layers. What happened is that uh, people found that for CNN, it's actually learned to extract the features. In, in uh, the uh, bottom layers, more mo likely you see this low level features, something like the uh, texture or edges, colors or things like that. And then you see some patterns, this middle level features, this looks like an eye or something like that. And, and then as we go up, there's a high level features, you know, this whole thing, you know, uh, this is kind of shape, right? This kind of, you know, you can, you can recognize it's a part of the face or, or part of the object, high level, okay. But, but the problem is that uh, we, we, we don't, we possibly, we don't know uh, because it's learned by itself, it's, it's black box. We don't really know what's in there, right? It's only afterwards we're looking at it. And, and think about it, if it's a hundred layers, uh, even if we know it's these features, but we still don't know the final classifier for these particular features, how much, what's the weight to the final classifier, right? Because it's after so many layers, you don't know what if this one change a little bit, how does that would, uh, uh, how would that affect your result? You just don't know. That's a problem of the uh, black box. But, but on the other hand, it also verifies uh, the process in terms of pattern classification system is indeed is uh, also learn to extract a feature uh, automatically. Okay, so uh, the, the difference is whether we people, we manually choose the feature or you choose the feature automatically. Okay. So in terms of the feature extraction, so uh, one thing we want to uh, do is we, we hope we can extract a feature uh, that has invariance uh, property. Well, what does it mean by invariance? That means for, across the samples, right? It's a common features for the same class, right? For for all samples, 
you know, it's kind of the common features. It's not, you know, uh, have significant difference from sample to sample. Uh, also, it's a uh, it's uh, uh, invariant to your to your uh, sensor conditions, right? For example, if we choose a, a uh, choose a uh, feature, uh, we we hope that no matter how you uh, let's you have camera, right? Whatever is your direction, that feature doesn't change, right? We hope that type of feature. Right. If we say the lens is is already uh, kind of have invariant features, but but if we 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 just say uh, for the fish image, right? Let's say if for the fish image, if if we just say okay, if we have this bounding box with the lens of a bounding box, then you have a problem because what if the fish, uh, you know, your picture, the the orientation is not right. What well, what is if it's rotated, right? Then it's not sample invariant. So we want the feature to be invariant across uh, the, the, the different samples. Okay, so we, the criteria we want is similar between the objects in the same class, but we want it different to be uh, uh, for the different classes, right? So uh, the environments uh, he here, basically, is so some examples, right? Is uh, your feature would be uh, environment to the location of the fish, or orientation of the fish, or the scale of the fish, or occlusion, right? Whether one fish on top of another, the feature ex extract, would, if that's different, it's a problem. Or projective distortion, right? Uh, or uh, speech rate, if you want to do the speech recognition, we hope that the the feature uh, is is uh, the same. It's 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 the same if you have speech speed, right? But again, that's depend on your task. If your task is to recognize speaker, maybe the rate of the speech is an important feature for the speaker, right? For speaker recognition. But if your task is just to recognize the, the speech itself, right, then your feature better to, to be environment to the rate. And also various deformation, hopefully your, your uh, feature is environment to those uh, deformation. In terms of the regression classification, I will address that question uh, later in the class. Okay, so basically environments first, we need to hopefully, uh, if this is different orientation, right? And uh, you say this is different background and different lighting, right? And this has occlusion as well, one fish on top of another. We hope the feature we extract uh, is uh, environment to those conditions. So from there, we also can see that the good features, they are highly dependent to the task and domain. Okay, it's a task dependent. So basically the feature good for sorting fish may not be good for identifying fingerprint or classifying video scenes, right? Uh, the feature selection, the principle, uh, so basically uh, we can have straightforward selection and oftentimes it's actually transform-based selection. We use more transform-based selection. From here also you can see that why, why uh, the universal uh, machine is difficult, okay? Because uh, this feature itself is uh, uh, task and domain specific. And also for regularization issues, that's uh, will be also be domain specific. A feature good for one task may not be good for another task. You say, oh, oh can we learn that? Uh, yes, okay, we can learn that, but then there's probably other parameters you cannot learn, right? So it's, uh, so the question is that right now we don't have a universal method, we can learn all those type of possible parameters. So then the next step uh, is uh, classification, okay? So 
Uh, basically, we already explained perfect classification is impossible. Okay, and features are just the abstraction of the input. So it, it's actually a good thing in that uh, it's uh, because think about that environment, right? We're already processing things. If we can, uh, uh, our feature can be invariant to all those conditions, we're all already removing a lot of a lot of noise, right? And classification, you know, if we consider all the conditions, the classification can be uh, quite difficult. Uh, reasons due to the variation in features or uh, noise in the system, right? If there's a noise in the system, there's a, a could have problem. Okay, noise can be generated, basically it can generate it from sensors, right? So that's a, the, the information source. Uh, also, as you are processing your information, you could uh, add additional artificial uh, noise or artifact. Okay, and after classification, you 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 would need to do the uh, post processing uh, as well. Okay, the post processing. So, but so after you do the uh, classification, then it uh, in many cases the the classification is not end of your task, right? You classify that then you, you have next task. So decision, basically, for example, you, you want to make decision, right? When you make the decision, so there's a, uh, basically, uh, as we mentioned, what's the cost. And also, we need to consider the context. And, uh, and in many cases, probably one classifier is not enough, right? You can have multiple classifier, and then you can have the a mixture of the expert, as, as I mentioned. And, and you can have molting schemes or polling knowledge. You can, so a lot of other things you can, uh, you, you, you can do in uh, post-processing, okay. So here, here are some examples, right? Minim, minim, minimum classification errors. Uh, so basically, in the lens case, uh, you want to move this, change the decision boundary to minimize your classification errors. Okay, if you have another uh, feature, the same thing. So, so in terms of the design cycle, here's according to this diagram, right? So first, you need to collect the data. Then you need to choose the feature. Then you choose the model. And then you need to do training, right? So you need to do training, uh, basically using the, the data to learn. Right? Training is also called learning. Then you need to evaluate your uh, classifier, right? And then you probably you need to go back. If you evaluate a classifier, as I mentioned, OK, if the classifier, uh, the performance is not as good as we uh, it's not applicable, then what do we do? We go back to this cycle, right? So, so it's a, uh, uh, that will inform which step we need to, we need to change, right? If, if we say, okay, the data is not good, we go back to the data collection or labeling, right? And uh, in this, when we choose the feature or choose the model, oftentimes we need to use prior knowledge, okay, the domain knowledge. So what's the data collection? So basically, is your training data set large enough? Is it representative enough? Okay, to, to basically, to, 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 is the distribution, for example, that histogram represent the whole data set? Okay, because if it's biased, then, then your, your classifier is not going to have a good generalization uh, 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 performance, right? So it's like, you know, in the with, uh, US just went through an election, you know, when, when you do the election, the election poll, right? But when you do those poll, if, if your poll is not random enough, right? If, if your poll, you, the population you poll is uh, biased, then your result is not going to be good. Okay, it not, may not represent the, 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 the final uh, uh, 
the, the actual voting result. Okay. So this data collection uh, in today's world is can represent a large part of development costs, right? So uh, you probably heard, you know, for those uh, 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 image classification or face detection or whatever that, basically you need to collect a lot of data and that's, and you need to label those data, right? It's a lot of cost. So, uh, so much so that uh, people, are, you know, so when we, um, our researchers, when we're talking, you know, people are joking say, okay, it's uh, rather than it's uh, artificial intelligence, the uh, people, uh, you know, joking is called manual, manual intelligence because, because for the data, for the training set, you know, you, there's a lot of manual labor. You need to people to sit in the front of screen and label everything, segment everything, right? For autonomous driving and segment all the uh, all type of object. So that's uh, uh, data uh, collection. And then you need to choose the feature, right? Choose feature, you know, I cannot overemphasize the importance of feature choice. Uh, it is very critical, it's a problem domain specific. And also think about today's world, okay? Many, I think in most applications, we are not able to uh, use the end-to-end -end approach, okay? Although the, the, we, you say the deep learning, most of them are kind of end-to-end. But still, you know, they add a lot of uh, uh, domain uh, specific knowledge. But actually, in most of the cases in real world, you don't have uh, luxury to do the end to end. So you still need to manually uh, develop the feature. So then basically, you need to know uh, you have prior knowledge, right? If, if uh, the medical imaging, you need to understand how to read that image. And then when you design the, the algorithm, you need to take that into a, you know, account. Okay, so you work with the doctor. And if you do a, you know, anything you do, you, you want to work with the domain expert. Okay, and then the, the, the key thing is how you, do you uh, combine the prior knowledge and empirical data to, to get the good features. And basically, what, what model are you, are you choosing, right? You to train a linear model or a polynomial model or deep learning model, what type of model you're going to choose? So uh, the way it, in this case, we basically, uh, uh, we use domain knowledge, right? And also, always the, we use trial and error. If it, one doesn't work, we would, we would try uh, another. Okay, and even for neural network, you know, even if that's a deep learning, but what, what, which network is good for you? How do you choose your network parameter? That's purely trial and error, okay? So we hope, in, we always hope have more systematic method, right? But in the machine learning world, unfortunately, uh, at the end, the, we will have some tri trial and error uh, process. That's actually a training process as well, right? It's part of training. Uh, which is not automatic. So then there's a uh, training, right? Training is basically, so we need to tune the parameter and learn from the data. We need to have a training algorithm, okay? And uh, we need to evaluate. Uh, so you need, to, you need to have your evaluation criteria, criteria uh, upfront that include your cost function, right? How do you evaluate a model? And, uh, and how do you evaluate its uh, training performance as well as the generalization performance? How do you uh, figure out uh, whether it's uh, possibly it's going to have overfitting? So, and uh, also there's a computational complexity you need to consider, right? So whether uh, this is, the, the, your, your uh, model uh, at the end is unpractical because of the computational cost. Okay, uh, so I will stop at this, this slide. Now I will elaborate a bit more in terms of learning uh, paradigms. Basically the majority, I would say 99% of the 
uh, intelligent system we are looking at today, including deep learning models, supervised learning, that is with a teacher, okay, with the label data. Of course, ideally, we hope that we can achieve the unsupervised learning that is without teacher. There's no labels, okay, and we can infer the structure from natural redundancy found in the data. Okay, those are two of the major paradigm. And then they say, oh, what if we have the partial data label that's called semi-supervised learning? Uh, also, instead of unsupervised, with, uh, uh, now there's uh, a popular uh, one, it's called reinforcement learning, right? So we, we don't have label, but we have a critique. Basically, I will tell you yes or no, right? It's, it's very costly. Then in the game, they say uh, we can use, uh, there's a reinforcement learning uh, mechanism. That is fine because it's a perfect information, right? You play the game at the end, like AlphaGo, that's what, what, what it does, right? And AlphaZero, it, it, initially it used uh, human, uh, uh, you know, use supervised learning, use, 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 use human play as a teacher, but later it learned by itself. That is actually reinforcement learning because, because it's uh, learn from the result. Right, I don't know my move, but I know the finally whether I win or not. Okay, the, because for the game, there's a win or lose, right? So, but as we can see, you have to generate, because so many steps in the game, right? You have to generate, uh, um, it's not hundreds of thousands, millions of millions of game to be able to uh, figure out uh, from the final result, figure out your, your a particular step, whether whether that, that's the right step or not. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, introduction uh, uh, part. And uh, we, we haven't got getting very technical yet. It's uh, conceptual and for conceptual, you have a lot of questions that, that is good. Keep those questions in mind. At the end, we hope to solve those uh, questions, answer those questions, use the, use equations, right? If we have equation, then that's good, we can compute, right? If we don't have an equation, we cannot compute. The computer uh, only deal with equations, right? Okay, so that's for today. Uh, so uh, make sure you get familiar with the, all the labs and uh, 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 prepare with uh, some, some uh, the, uh, the last week we have this, uh, you know, probability things, right? Because we are going to go to the BS theory. So make sure uh, you, if, if you haven't yet review some uh, probability and st statistics you have learned in your uh, undergrad study. Okay, that's for today. Uh, let me see. Uh, there is a question, are there any examples of great success in deep learning with human chosen feature? Uh, there's, there's a lot, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, the, your deep learning can start from human chosen feature or combination of the raw data and human cho chosen feature. Okay, so um, that's a short answer to that question. Anything else? Okay, so uh, that's pretty much for today. And uh, I will see you uh, next Tuesday. Okay, so bye for now. Bye, Dr. Zhang. Thank you.